this morning, let the, your thunder go forth and your truth like light, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, I would, in the beginning, I want to thank uh, Pastor Joe and Pastor Zhang and Spirit Life for giving me this opportunity. I also want to share what I learned uh, from here, especially uh, two aspects. Uh, what impact me the most. First, of course, is the prophecy. <laughs> I received a word from Pastor John, uh, Pastor Joe. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, we gotta have a baby. Uh, so the, I, I have this journey. So you already know this story. But uh, the other night I shared uh, in the prayer meeting, uh, we were talking about the worship. So they were talking about we don't have a worship leader. But me and Ones is uh, related our experience to Pastor John. Uh, one thing I got the most besides prophecy is worship. Even we don't have a worship leader, but I just told him because I'm uh, totally new in this worship. Uh, you gotta learn from the beginning. Even you learn one song uh, by another song, because all the song uh, you are familiar with is totally brand new to me. So, so even Chris, uh, he's serving in the back. So sometimes we serve a small thing. You don't even know what you serve impact people the most. Uh, the one of great impact on me is the worship. So, because uh, I receive a word of prophecy, we're gonna have a baby, and I heard the Lord talk, talking to me. But in reality, there is a lot of fighting. I was constantly worried. I remember Pastor Joe said, don't worry, it's part of that. But still worry. So how can I fight this worry? And there's a lot of a attack from Satan in the household. So what I learned is, because I'm learning worship here, I, every week I'm learning how to worship through different sounds. Then I go online to search how to worship, to listen more on teachings about worship. So. One thing I learned is, don't worry about anything else. Just worship the Lord, enthrone Him in your household. Because uh, the Lord, the Jehovah, is enthroned in the praise of Israel. He's enthroned. So uh, I learned this, and I started practice at home. I just pray, uh, play, uh, play this song, He's a good, good father. Again and again, even there is quarrel, there is attack in the house. But I just abandon myself. I, can, I forget about anything else right now. I just turn on this song, then I worship Father. Then I just uh, sing with the song, He is a good, good Father. He is a good, good Father. Amen. He gives great, great gift. This, uh, two, this song <laughs> really impacted me the most, and these two verses impacted me the most. So I repeat again, again. He is a good, good Father. <laughs> and He gives great, great gift. Even uh, even later, uh, Ruth found that she was pregnant. You know, the doctor always gave false report. Yeah. <laughs> they gave false report or something. Okay, because uh, uh, we were doing an IVF in New York. So uh, w when she was pregnant, she was still seeing the doctor. That she just told them, they 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 said okay, because this is totally outside their uh, logic. They said no, it's not a real pregnancy. Is a pre I don't know the medical term, but is a is is a fail, f false pregnancy in the uh, uh, you know is not in the um, uh, uterus, but I was, you know I, I don't know the term, but but basically he giving they giving the false report and <laughs> just was afraid that I comfort him that he is a good good father, <laughs> he gives great great gift, yes. so. Don't worry. Not, not uh, before we were pregnant, but during the pregnancy, there are always anxiety attack, panic attack, <laughs> especially on my wife. But I always re refer to this song. He is a good, good father, and he gives great, great gift. Yeah. So uh, this uh, this uh, topic on my learning about inner healing, subject inner healing, but is also a journey for me to experience inner healing myself because I did not start from here this testimony sounds great but I did not start here, here. Uh, one of the truths I learned from inner healing is when you have an earthly father 
or uh, parents, uh, if they don't <laughs> represent God, the love in your family, you probably develop a false identity about the Father's love. It's, it's a matter of truth. So uh, I'm from a family. Uh, my father is a good man, but like uh, Rodney Hughes, he's shared in the many messages. He said uh, he's just not emotionally right there. <laughs> he's a good man, but he has an emotional uh, problem. So he, he's just not there emotionally. So I, not, I never learned uh, to trust uh, uh, God as my father. I never learned. Uh, I have a father, like not like m some people. They have divorced. They don't have father. I have a father, but he's just not there emotionally. I just don't know how to express it. <laughs> but he just didn't spend time. I, he just didn't care. Uh, I I just uh, you know we have I have good relationship with him uh, right now. But uh, I just uh, re recall uh, how I grew up. So uh, the one of the truths in inner healing is we represent Father's love toward the people in our family, the, our kids, or the one who are affected by us, like even our spiritual children. What we do, we represent Father's love. And we were created to represent Father's love. But if we fail, we will give other people a wrong identity about Father. If, like many people, like uh, uh, I read Chris Willington uh, from Basel Church, his uh, uh, experience. He told uh, how his uh, father died, and his mother married a couple of men, and they were all abusive. I gave him a wrong identity about father. So uh, everybody has different experiences, but we. I started that I don't know. God as a father. Of course, that's before, uh, as true before I became a believer. But after I became a believer, I still have this problem. So in the church I was saved, I wrote this in online. We had a different worship service. We have worship service in the first part is worship Jesus Christ, the son, for his sacrifice. And the second part of worship, we worship father. So I always, I always had no problem with worship Jesus. He sacrificed, he died for me, he loved for me. But on the second part, they all call Father, uh, God as our Father, Abba Father, worship me as a Father. I really had a uh, hard time. I, I told to one uh, friend, I said I couldn't, could not relate to God as my Father. I was trying to seek help from him and ask him, him why. He said he's, uh, this is probably, probably a matter of life growth. You don't know, uh, you don't have, uh, you know, uh, a spiritual journey long enough to know God as a father. So that stirred my uh, uh, curiosity or uh, desire to know God as my father. Uh, one of the uh, truths I learned is uh, from the verse Romans 8.16. That verse says, the spiritual himself testify with our spirit. We are God's children. Because uh, I heard an uh, illustration uh, from uh, Watchman Nee. Uh, he, that helped me a little bit. So I'm re uh, recapping the journey I'm learning about seeing God as a father. There are other people who had the same problem. They had uh, difficulty to relate to God as a father. So they came to this uh, uh, watch many, and he asked, this is a Chinese brother, he asked him, how can I relate God as my, as my father? Uh, then watch many uh, ponder a while and then ask him, Did you, do you have a father-in-law? He said, yes, I have a father-in-law. Do you still remember the first time you call your father-in-law a father? <laughs> he said, I remember. It's, I have to, but it's kind of awkward. Because <laughs> he said, and then what many ask him back, did you call God Abba Father? He said, yes. Can you call Abba Father now? He called Abba Father. Then uh, what many ask him again, do you feel awkward in you? He said, I called. I didn't feel awkward. Yeah, then what many, that represent that, that means God is your real father <laughs> because you don't feel awkward. <laughs> 
<laughs> you don't feel awkward. Then uh, he's, because this is aligned to the truth of the Bible, because the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, witness with our spirit. We are children of God. Yeah. So this, uh, uh, I'll just read another verse, Romans 8.14, also support this. Uh, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Some version translated as many as who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So, uh, this every uh, point we were required to give an illustration. So I'll give an illustration like this. So, uh, we, because God is is gold, He's a precious stone. Because in Genesis, he, where wherever the river of God flows, he, he, there is a precious stone, um, gold and silver and pearls. Uh, but we were made dark. We were, we were made dark, according to the image of God. But we we're made with the dirt. But the dirt can be transformed to the precious stone, <laughs> because when the dirt uh, was pressed with high pressure, even you know underneath the uh, earth, all of this pressure will transform us uh, into a precious stone. So uh, yes, we were not children of God, but we were adopted to His son and daughters. Uh, we are cre we were created as dirt, <laughs> but God's original purpose was not <laughs> to keep us as dirt. Uh, forever. No, he wanted to transform us with, uh, of course, sometimes pressures to be, become precious stone like he is, yeah. jasper stone. Because in, in the end of the Bible, Genesis, you see all the precious stones are there in the New Jerusalem. <laughs> That's our future. <laughs> so God is light. He, he is precious stone. Uh, he, we were made according to his image. So that uh, verse also helped me to develop my identity uh, as the son, as the children of God, the Father. It's a long journey, because I said uh, I had this rough beginning. I had a hard time to relate with my heavenly Father and no, the earthly Father. Uh, also, I had a difficulty to relate God as my heavenly Father. So I, I spent a long time, uh, more than ten years, to seek inner healing to know God as my father. Uh, I'll share another verse is Romans 8.15. This is point B. Uh, the main title is the spirit of adoption. Romans 8.15 uh, says, For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry. Abba Father. So I was taught this and I, I, I was wondering, so we have received the spirit of adoption. We have the Holy Spirit in us. And by this spirit, we call Abba Father. So the, one day I was thinking, how, how about reverse this? Because I have received the spirit of adoption. Then th by this spirit, I call Abba Father. How about I reverse it? I call Abba Father. Because this, I call Abba Father by this spirit. I will have more experience with this spirit of adoption. Because I have difficulty to call him Abba Father. So, so I, I started to call Abba Father. So in my quiet time, in my prayer time, I often uh, take lunch time to walk uh, in a garden to pray. Then I just pray, simply pray Abba Father. I just repeat couple hundred times, uh, just walk Abba Father. Because I, I, the main purpose, I don't know Abba Father, so uh, I, I reverse this uh, equation. I call Abba Father because <laughs> this Abba Father I call by the spirit of adoption, I will have more experience with the spirit. So I call Abba Father, Abba Father. And the more you, you pray, the, the more you call, I start experiencing as as a father. So until uh, one point, uh, until one point that 
I, I was in the park uh, pray for a couple of years because I did not know what the Lord's leading for me. I know the Lord was leading me to a different direction from my uh, denomination. Also, I had a difficulty in uh, uh, conceiving uh, the baby, so uh, I thought the Lord was uh, leading me somewhere else, but I didn't know where. It's been uh, almost one to two years every day I went to the park to pray. I don't know uh, what's the Lord leading for me. So I, I prayed a long time before I reached out, step out to search online to uh, find a, a different approach. But it took me a year or two to pray, to ask the Lord, where, where are you leading me to? And what about the uh, baby? So I started <coughs> daily to pray on Luke 11. Because on Luke 11, there's a story that uh, if you are uh, if you ask the father a fish, he will not give you a snake. If you go give, ask him a bread, he will not give you a stone. If you ask for an egg, he will not give you a scorpion. So I, I daily converse this uh, passage to father, and, and I told him, uh, you're not going to fail me because you never fail me. Uh, you are a good, good father. I will present my needs to you because the uh, earth's, earthly father being evil, they still give good things to uh, his children. That's uh, recorded in Matthew. Matthew says good things, so I consider all the blessings. But Luke 11 uh, says the Holy Spirit, because I was asking the God, God Father give me uh, the good thing, the baby. Also, I was asking God to fill me with the Holy Spirit, because I, I didn't know, did not know the knowledge about feel, be filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. I was seeking. So I was seeking two things. I was thinking these two were somewhat, somewhat uh, connected, but I don't know how they are connected. So I daily pray to Father uh, this passage. If I ask you a bread, you surely not give me a stone. If I ask a fish, surely you not give me a, a snake. So I, I daily pray this prayer and uh, combined with calling his name Abba Father and a story experience uh, in more real sense he is my father <laughs> so uh, I'll give uh, I'll finish on this point too uh, I mentioned in Romans 8.15 by in uh, we, we did not receive the spirit of slavery but we receive a stop, spirit of stop, uh, adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Because uh, we were required to give uh, one illustration for wh one point. I give uh, uh, this, this illustration. Uh, I was uh, enlightened I, with the illustration that uh, our relationship with the trying God God is like the tea, or on the tea, uh, the tree, or the tea leaf. He's the essence of the tea. But He has to make Himself available for us. So the Christ is like a tea bag. Everything is processed, is like a tea bag. But uh, we, uh, the children of God, like, is like a water. So we are mingled. The tea bag put in us, like Christ lives in us, then He saturates us with his essence of God. We receive the tea bag, the son, but actually we receive the father because the father is in the son. Uh, the one thing is I learned is, uh, I observe this. Sometimes if we don't believe Jesus Christ and we receive, refuse father as well, or sometimes we were lukewarm. We are water. We have Christ the bag in us, but the, the tea cannot come out enough because we are lukewarm. <laughs> So we have to fan our spirit into flame, like Paul says. Fan our spirit into flame. So the more I exercise my spirit, the more I exercise my faith, I'm not doing anything to Christ, to change Christ or the Father, but I'm adding more energy to the water. The water become hotter, and the tea bag will release more tea, the essence of God into me. So I consider that's a transformation process. 
So I cannot change God. God, God is unchangeable. But I can change myself. I can change, find my spirit into flame. I become a hot water, not lukewarm. <laughs> then the tea, then the tea will release the uh, essence. The tea bag will release the essence of tea. Actually, it is the Father. Because the Father is in the Son. And the Son is in us, will saturate us. That's why I, I consider, uh, if I call Abba Father, I uh, switch the uh, direction. I call Abba Father. I, I believe in faith. I cry out, Abba Father, in this spirit of adoption. And I, this spirit of adoption I receive from, from God. Also, the same verse. <clears throat> yeah, I uh, already talked about the Luke 11. That really helps me. So uh, in, in that process, we'll come back uh, to the experience I have here in spiritual life. So I pray daily uh, on my personal time to converse with God as a father, uh, to experience him, him as a father. Then one day I got a confirmation. Uh, in the VOA conference, Voice of, Voice of uh, uh, Pro- VOP com- was a prophet conference, 2016, I believe. I was worshiping in, in the front. And there's a lady I did not know. She said she's from England. And she, she came to me. Uh, she said she had a word for me. Because I received a prophecy from Pastor uh, Joe in the end of 2015. That I went to Elijah List conference uh, in the er- uh, January of 2016. I shared this. I heard the Lord tell me through the calendar, you prepare your family, 2016, prepare family. So I believe God, and I went to China to see my family. I told all my family members, God will give us children, <laughs> give us a child this year. And they did not believe, but I sowed the seed into that. But recently, my mother reflect uh, back uh, to this fact. She told me, your God is a real God. Because she went to many adults to pray for her child for us, but she did not get it. I even told him, God prophesied over me, I have more than one child. <laughs> and he, she was uh, hoping to get a, a, a son. You know, In China, they, they really want a son. So, uh, but she uh, testified, uh, you have fact proof your God is real. I told him. Because <laughs> uh, when they, the Holy Spirit reminded me, I uh, re- asked my mother to remove her idols. Because I have a close relationship with my mom. Uh, I know she worships idol, but uh, I don't feel to force her to get rid of her idol. But when they, uh, the Holy Spirit reminded me uh, to get, uh, remind her to get rid of idols. And before that, I had a dream. My parents was in a tree house. I was building a tree house for them. <laughs> I, I was uh, uh, moving all the furniture, all the wood, wood board. So I consider that's a dream from the Lord. They might be saved. Because I, my father, uh, I w- allowed my father to pray to receive the Lord. And recently, I also allowed my mother to receive the Lord. <laughs> so uh, I personally not experienced the breakthrough as uh, my heavenly father. I also experienced the breakthrough to help my father, my parents my mother to uh, get through the idol worship and uh, generational curses. I also received words uh, from others. Uh, they reminded me, they got a little word from the Lord. Uh, because my father, uh, my, I, I'm from a, a family, a, a tradition of wor- worshiping idols. Our home was built on a farmer's uh, Buddhist temple. So all oh, my grand, great-grandfather, he was serving a priest in an idol uh, temple. So my gr- grandfather worshipped idol, my mother worshipped idol. Only my father did not worship I- idol. 
So I received word from others like uh, the Lord. Uh, also, it, during its inner healing class, uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, two-way journaling. So one day I was journaling, the Lord told me, uh, I had to cut, cut off your idol worship from your fa father's generation. That's why he was uh, tormented by the evil spirit. So uh, I also received a, pr a word of knowledge from a religious conference that uh, the, the enemy tried to torment you through your father. So you should forgive your father to not only forgiving him, but love him. So through this inner healing process, not only I experience, uh, but I have my parents to know the Lord, to experience the Father's love. I was already f also forgive my father because the Lord told me he had to cut off the generational curse from his generation to prepare me to receive him. Because all my family members worship idol, but my father didn't worship idol. He was tormented by the idols. So I, I can go back why he was behaving like he was tormented. He, we did not know this. So that's why I love the deliverance, <laughs> deliverance ministry as well. Uh, uh, go back, I'll end it soon. Go, go back to the word I received, the voice of a uh, prophet meeting. Uh, the, la the English lady came to me. He said, uh, he, she, she said she received the word from the Lord. She said, uh, you were in certain place, you always praying uh, uh, to uh, Father to consecrate yourself. And he, she said, she felt the Lord uh, let her tell me uh, the Lord felt uh, very pl pleased with that period of time. So it immediately draw me attention to the time I spent in the uh, garden to pray to the Father, Abba, Father, Abba, Father. He, she gave me a confirm, confirmation word. Then I asked her that if you have any other word, I, I don't have a baby at that, at that time. Then she prayed, uh, she saw a vision, she saw a little son, a little boy <laughs> walking on the floor. I think other uh, also received this uh, vision, but it, this all gave me comfort, it gave me uh, uh, encouragement. Our conclusion is this one is almost 30 minutes. Uh, the also, uh, 2 Corinthians 3.18, uh, an IV version said, and we all who with unveiled face contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Uh, we, we are supposed is like a mirror to behold and reflect the glory of the Lord. Uh, someone told me this illustration. Uh, so if, if God the Father is light, and Jesus Christ is the uh, infulgence of God's glory. He is a total reproduction of the Father's light. He is uh, like a mirror. He just behold the Father and he reflect whatever he received the Father because he is transparent. He is no thing. Then he turned back to uh, Paul. Paul is, uh, was seeing his experience because Paul is constantly beholding and reflecting Christ as a mirror. Then Paul re referred, so people can see the God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ. This is what Paul said. When, when people see Paul, they can see God's glory reflected on the face of Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus Christ reflects the glory of God, the Father, 100%. And Paul is reflecting and beholding Jesus Christ. And when people see Paul, because Paul is such a mirror, they see through Paul, to Jesus Christ and to the Father's glory Amen. in face of Jesus Christ, but in the, Paul's, in the face of Paul. It's supposed to be everybody's story. So when the unbelievers see us, they don't only see us, they see God's glory in Christ Jesus on our face. Amen. But sometimes we were created to reflect God's glory as His Father, the love of the Father, but uh, sometimes our mirror were contaminating. <laughs> become dirty. Uh, either we have a sin, or e either we are uh, contaminated with the world of this uh, uh, age. So the Lord will come into us as the blood of 
all powerful blood to wash our sin, and also as the powerful the word water, wa 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 word of water, to cleanse our every defection. So we become uh, such a transparent mirror to reflect Him uh, from glory to glory, and it's from the Holy Spirit. So uh, our conclusion is. God is our Heavenly Father because He has regenerated us by the, His Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is what the God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and we, the children of God, shares. Because God is the Spirit. He has, the Holy Spirit is the of God. And the, Jesus Christ is, the, is also the, the Spirit. Because the uh, Bible tells uh, the last Adam became a life-giving Spirit. Jesus Christ he, he, he has the Holy Spirit in him. He was empowered with the Holy Spirit. And we receive the Holy Spirit. So we share the Holy Spirit. We don't share the Godhead, but we share the life of the Holy Spirit within us. So that's our common factor. The grace, the f uh, this is 2 Corinthians thirteen fourteen. The grace, this is from Amplified Version. Favor and spiritual blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the presence and the fellowship, the communing and the sharing together and participation in the Holy Spirit will be with you all. This from Second Corinthians thirteen fourteen, Amplified Version. The fellowship, fellowship of the Holy Spirit is constantly flowing among us, the Father, the Son, and us, the believers. The Holy Spirit witness and testify, I am the child of God, and in the Holy Spirit of adoption, I receive, I call, I can call, Abba Father. Abba Father. Amen. The failure of earthly father representing God as our heavenly father needs to be healed and recovered. And we need to grow to maturity in Christ so we can be fathers to our own children and many other spiritual offsprings. Uh, in the end, we need to do an activation. Maybe we can pray together. Luke 11 uh, 11 through 13 to activate our faith to know God as our Heavenly Father. I'll just read. If you want to pray, you can pray after me. What Father among you? If his son asks for a loaf of bread, will give him a stone? If he asks for a fish, will instead a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion. If you then, evil as you are, know how to give good gifts, gifts that are to their advantage, to your children, how much more will you, your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask and continue to ask Him? Amen. Amen. Well, enter into a 15 minutes uh, Q&A. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Brother, I got one. I'll, I'll start it off. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll start it off, and hopefully, uh, if y'all got questions, raise your hand. Um, we don't. I wish I had a mic that I could pass around. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a wireless mic, but um, to try and speak. They can up. come to the front. Use that one and have them come to the front. Or they can come up to the front. That's a, that's an option too. Yeah. That way, um, we get it on the tape. So we'll do that then. Y'all go with that. So <laughs> if I was a little walking around, brother, I'm about to plug this back in. You pray in here, Pop. <clears throat> All right, good. Test, test, test. All right. But I got one for you. Um, in one of the verses that you had brought up in chapter 8, Romans, uh, I'm going to find it here. It says in 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. And my question is, is when people aren't led by the Spirit. You know what I mean? So it's like, if we're all here, we're led by the Spirit, and we've all given our hearts uh, and, and proclaimed to Jesus through the mouth and our confession of the heart as well, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. In this day and age, you know what I mean? With so much distraction, especially in America, with it's just go, 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 and different forms of worship, and other quote-unquote entities or gods, if you will. And a lot of people know God as uh, the Old Testament God. And then they reverse that image to say, well, God's just 
he's a condemner, he's a, he's a killer, he's, uh, how can he be anything but good? Have you had an experience? And if not, what would you do to, to, to encounter someone like this? How would you present God to be a good God, our New Testament God? Because all they see is the Old Testament God. You see, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, sense? yeah. What, what would you say to someone? If I'm just someone who doesn't know Jesus Christ, because I don't want to know, because all I see in the Old Testament is, well, you condemn me. You know, why would I want to get into a good God if all this death happens around me? You know what I mean? Does that make sense? How would you portray that to me? Uh, it's a hard question, but as, as a matter of fact, it's like Paul pray. You know, we receive God as our Father. We need a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Because without the spirit of wisdom and revelation, all spiritual thing is, is done for us. That's why Paul mentioned that his, his way is, is, is a cross, is, is the humble way. It's not as smart in the, peop in the eyes of the people in this world. And that's why he prayed for the Ephesian church. It's really not for those people he mentioned. They heard about the church, or they uh, did not have the experience of God as Father as real subjective experience. Not only them, but even people in the church, like I just shared my own experience. Even we people in the church, we still have this lack of this subjective experience of God as Father. Why? Because we are lacking what Paul prayed, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Because Paul said, the, the flesh knows only flesh. The soulish people do not know the things of spirit. Right. Only a spiritual man, spiritual things, spiritual man can know the things of spirit. And only the Holy Spirit knows everything. Mm -hmm. So without the help of the Holy Spirit, without this, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, we just simply cannot know God as the Father. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just a fact. So, you know, it, it sounds too passive, but uh, what I learned, they, they have a word called uh, middle voice or uh, passive aggressive. Yes, as Bible says, being led by the Spirit of God. But you still have to be willing being led by the Spirit of God. Right. It's uh, passive. The Bible tends is passive. You being led by the Spirit, being filled by the Spirit of God. It's not my effort or endeavor to try and be filled by the Spirit. On the one hand, it's passive first because God chose you. God will do His work. It's God's, God's is sovereign. But God also gives us a free will. If you're willing to be filled with this Holy Spirit, because I have this experience, because I long for be filled with the Holy Spirit. I search here, I search there, I go place for us people to pray for me. But I, when I share the experience of baptism with the Holy Spirit, many people, they just don't want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You, you see what I mean? They, they, they just don't have the willingness. Uh, I, I call the active passive. On the one side, the uh, Bible mentioned all of this principle, so be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be led by the Holy Spirit. And, uh, 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 and many other places. We are passive in one uh, sense. But on the other hand, uh, we are aggressively active re to, to, to prepare myself to be re filled with the Holy Spirit, to be led by the Holy Spirit. Cause, so it's, it's, a, it's an equation that both God and man has to play a certain part. Then God create man a free will, and <laughs> we cannot force them. <laughs> That's the problem. So if they are willing to be led by the Spirit, they are willing to know God, because uh, in this passage, Luke 11, whoever seeks, seek, they will hear shall find. Whoever knock, the door shall be open. Whoever asks, shall be given them. Right. And James talks about this also. If you did not receive wisdom, you never ask. If you ask, you surely receive. So I think this is tied for if we have asked, if we have the heart. If you have the heart, surely the God will arrange someone to help you. But if you don't have the heart, the Lord knows already. So he's not bothering you anymore. He just let you, like Romans, he let you three times, let you do this, let you do that, let you do that. 
So it's almost like kind of a, a little bit of responsibility on us too because, yeah. you know, if I don't go, like what you just said earlier, and if I go to your garden and you say, Abba Father, Abba Father, yeah. you get to know God as that actual child and says adoption, it's almost like we have to do our responsibility. Otherwise, I just give up that person experience with John, not with God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, cool. Cool. Anyone else? I'm going to try to get up tangled here. I love that song, He's a Good, Good Father, but I also didn't grow up with a good, good father <laughs> but uh, and struggled. But now I'm concerned about my grandchildren. So um, if they're not raised, you know, with a father that is in Christ, or how would they, they just go through the process and the Lord will bring them through, or I don't know how to direct my question exactly, but I remember when my granddaughter once said to me, I prayed for something and God didn't answer me. Yeah. So I wasn't really sure. I, you know, I tried my best to tell her, well, in time, you know, he doesn't answer right away, but he may answer you later. Just wait for it. Just keep believing, looking for whatever it is that, you know, I didn't want to probe and ask her, what are you asking for? But that was none of my business. But I'm concerned about the generation, I suppose, is what my question is. Yeah. Yeah, I had the same experience, but I learned one thing is, uh, of course, it's good we have a earth, good earthly father. It will give us a model uh, to know the love of fa the heavenly father. But on the other hand, uh, if we lack the earthly father's love, uh, it also create a vacuum in us to seek more about the Heavenly Father's love. Uh, what I heard one from uh, a preacher is, so every uh, weakness we have, or every shortcoming we have, is our opportunity to know God's characteristic on this aspect more. For example, if I'm naturally a nice person, I never lose my temper. I will never experience God as my forbearance. If I have a all natural love from my family or from my inner being, I will next never experience God as love wow. as much. So they says every weakness you have, every difficulty you have, is like a, a satellite receiving station. You 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 have a satellite. You receiving more signals toward have it. But many people, they, they, they only uh, place this weakness uh, toward themselves. They only see, look at their weakness. They don't look at God, that aspect of God. They only look at themselves, they complain in God. But God give you a vacuum or give you a, a, a weakness, certain weakness. It's the created opportunity to, for you to experience more than many others about this aspect of God. But you have to turn this uh, satellite station toward the satellite signal on the heaven. So you have to behold and reflect God and mirror. So I certainly experience it. I like certain aspects of God uh, because of my nature, because of the family group. So I learned this truth. So, so I always focus on God on uh, that aspect. So I got a transformation. I heard a story. Is, this is a Chinese story. When there are two brothers, young the, the older brother is a very nice person. He's pious to his his uh, fidelity to his parents, his natural being. But the younger one, he's a bad guy. He's not good treating his parents good. But one day the younger one got saved, and he tried to behave to treat his parents better, and he constantly experienced the failure. But he opened to the Lord, he experienced the Lord's transformation. Later, he can still love his parents. But the older one, he uh, was making fun of his uh, younger brother. I'm better than you, even I'm not a Christian. <laughs> or even later, he became a Christian. I'm still better than you, without you not trying. But the question asked was, how, who experienced God's transformation more? 
who loved the, his parents with the love of God, not his natural love. So of course the younger brother. So uh, I I think is um, probably your question. I don't know your granddaughter, but many times we just focus on ourselves, and we were never taught to focus uh, God's goodness on His trial or His setup for us. Because you know, uh, I recently heard from uh, another preacher from uh, I, I forgot his name. Is is Bill? Is uh, one of the. Uh, Bill Johnson's uh, associates. He said, "Every setup. Uh, no, it's uh, Jamie Gallagher. A every setup, every setup, God wants to use that setup to help you enter into a different level or enter a different knowledge of God. But if you were stumbled by the setup, yeah, that's unfortunate." He was saying. He was giving experience. He was in a vacation, but a boy was drunk to death. And he prayed the Lord, you do something. Then he heard the Holy Spirit, you do something. Then he started to prophesy, to proclaim the boy is alive. Then uh, before the, the rescue team couldn't receive him, but before, after he started to prophesy, uh, uh, declare that he's going to live, and the boy was saved. And he used this illustration. Many times we think God set up something to 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 punish us to 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 do harm to us, but actually God sets something up is to for us to know Him better, His character be, characteristic better in that or or bring us into the next level of His life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you definitely. Your daughter, you can relate better to God's relationship to us. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's uh, that's a very positive experience. So I experienced that how uh, the father is willing to give everything to his child, like Ruth said uh, last time. You are willing to die for her any at any moment. His, amen. Yeah, my time is good. Okay, yeah. I have 47 minutes. Let's just give a round of applause to Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Brother, I'm going to let, let you, uh, I'll do closing remarks, but I'll let you, you end service with, with the prayer. Are you for that? Okay. Um, I think it's important. I just thank Sean for, for doing what he did.